Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Mega Life 21 Live. I am your host, uh, James P. Madonna, and this is a very special uh, fitness segment of Mega Life 21 Live that is connected to um, our Facebook group, uh, the uh, International Brotherhood of Polybonds. I am here with a very special guest, all the way from Perth, uh, Western Australia. This man, in my opinion, is one of the most, if not the most, devoted and dedicated human being uh, in regards to the ancient art and sport of club and mace swinging, circular training, because this man is currently on the Indian Club World Tour 2013. He is traveling around the world meeting with specific people. He is crowned currently the king of clubs, the one and only Paul Taras uh, Walkowinski. Thank you, James. It's, it's, nice, it's, to be here. it's nice to be here. I'm, I'm very uh, proud to have you here in the Garden State of New Jersey. Uh, Paul has uh, uh, been to, so far he has been uh, to, uh, besides his home city, of course, the Hawaii, Hawaii, Southern California, the Los Angeles area. Uh, then he uh, went to uh, um, uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia to meet with Izzy Barish. Then he, uh, oh, California, he met with uh, Rick Brown. Okay, from Rick Brown, he went to Philadelphia uh, to meet with Izzy Barish. Then he uh, went to Chicago. To Forteza Fitness, which right. is a martial arts um, sword playing. Um, uh, basically, they do a martial arts style, but it's it's medieval sword play and that sort of thing. And the Indian clubs is one of the things that they like to yes. do there. And yeah. th and then he went to uh, was it Bowling Green? Bowling Green, yeah. To uh, meet Roger Lapointe. Roger Lapointe of a, of Atomic Athletic in Ohio, Bowling Green, Ohio. Uh, are there lots of bowling alleys around Bowling <laughs> Green? <or no? laughs> I think it's a college town. Oh, right? it's a college town. <laughs> yeah. All so very, very pretty, very clean. Oh, class. okay, yeah. Well, I, 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 I've been through Ohio once. It's very farm-like, very yeah, flat. It's apparently flattest part of America. It's flat. Yeah. Well, I hear like Nebraska and yeah. Iowa. And there's a lot of flat parts of the United States where you see nothing but sky and cows and, uh, and corn and cow manure and things of that nature. But um, now he's here in the Northeast. Um, and uh, I'm very happy to have him here. It, it's kind of, um, it, it feels strange to, like in other words, we correspond via Facebook groups. And we have a circle of what you would call circular strength training gurus that we all, where we all are members of the same groups and we all correspond uh, by way of texting. Uh, I try to get certain people uh, to do shows on Skype. Uh, Rick Brown did it, but others are kind of shy about it, you know, they, or they don't have a webcam. But, you know, now to have you here in person and to meet you in person and think that you are really technically uh, uh, halfway around the world sure. and you're here is amazing in itself. But, uh, oh, now, now, you don't have to wear it. No, just for the camera. Well, hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll do it just Let's for the camera. Let's hold it. <laughs> the undisputed <laughs> king of clubs, Paul Walkowinski. <laughs> okay. For the camera. All right. For, for, for uh, uh, a <laughs> yes. photo op. Yeah, no, uh, put it on and just pause for a few seconds. Okay. For people that wish <laughs> to, to take a print screen and make a photo out of this. Okay. <laughs> see, see how can how considerate we are? All right. All right. Thank I'll, you, I'll just hold it. Okay. The, the king of clubs. No, seriously. This man has taken it upon himself at his own expense to travel the world. At, for the sake of uh, circular training in this ancient sport. And I know there's a lot of people out there that claim to be gurus and experts. And, uh, you know, some of them 
try to reinvent the wheel and uh, you don't do that uh, you research the subject you have researched the subject very well now how were you first introduced to circular strength to circular training well I started with them um, to be perfectly honest it, it wasn't with clubs it was kettlebells first but what I realized was that I liked I really like the swinging aspect of kettlebells particularly the yeah yeah, that. And cleans and uh, clean and press and so on. And then on the internet, I found um, club bells, bought some, wasn't really that keen on them. And then about at the same sort of time, I discovered um, the Cobbett and Jenkins book on um, Indian clubs on the internet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Downloaded it, found some patterns for um, clubs in the book, and then decided that that's what I wanted to check it check out. So I found a, a wood turner in Perth who could um, do that for me. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and um, he made me up the, the old four clubs that the Cobbett and Jenkin book um, has. And that really started my journey with clubs. It was just, I mean, it was another, th it was the, the swing element as from the kettlebells. It's a forward swing. Here it's a side plane swing. And um, it suddenly, I, it just caught me completely. I mean, I was just fascinated by it. So um, as I started to learn to swing the clubs, I also started to look for more and more information on the internet, which is a huge part of the learning curve that I went on and found another instrumental book, book was um, 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 Indian Clubs and How to Swing Them, swing them by um, uh, uh, Fred, sorry, Ferdinand Lemar. And that was written about 1889 from memory. And that's a book that's been instrumental to, to getting my technique going. Um, I'll have to say here that one of the biggest problems with those old books is the language that they're written in, because it's quite, sometimes quite difficult to understand. You have to reread, re reread. Re Victorian type. Well, well it's a Victorian, and also they they did have um, different words that they used that they um, described things in slightly different ways. Plus, I mean, the books contain drawings, and I mean, let me, nowadays we have video that we can, you know, you can copy yeah. a movement. Drawings so, with arrows. With drawing with arrows going around them, so you have to decipher it. I mean, it's, and it's not a five-minute job sometimes. So mm -hmm. you, you'll stand there, um, you swing the club, and you think, well, no, that's not what he means. So you do it again, and you do it again until you actually suss out what the, the You what have the to mean. follow the arrows with your eyes in sure. the illustration. And, and, and just by trial and error. Tra trial and error. And then basically, I mean, I, I have to say this um, from uh, just for the record that the Indian club swinging is, um, I would encourage anybody who, who tries to do it is to use a reflection, be it a, um, a, you know, a house um, window on the outside if you're in the garden or a mirror inside. And it hasn't got the vanity thing um, attached to it, like, say, for instance, with. Um, um, you know, in gyms, there's sometimes mirrors and people stare at themselves yeah. because the, what, oh, you're, yeah, do, what, you're, what you're doing, what you're doing with a mirror is you're actually watching the flight path of the club. So, you know, are you taking your arm up to the right angle above um, above your head? Are you turning the club properly? And then, if you're working with double club work, are you doing them um, the same way? One of the first things that I um, started doing, um, and I didn't realize until I actually started checking what I was doing in the mirror, was to my left arm was weaker, I'm right-handed, so I had to really work on my left arm and my left arm strength to get my arms balanced. The, right. the shapes that I was scribing were, were the same. So I mean, I, and I think that that's something that was um, you know, really valuable to, um, to me in, in progressing my, my skills, basically. Right. Yeah. Well, the mirror is definitely invaluable, a reflection is invaluable in terms of learning proper form which I think is the most important aspect of any exercise. Sure. You know, proper form above everything else because proper form also equates to safety, which is very important. Um, you know, physical fitness, the fact that you yourself, uh, you, you don't mind giving your age, right? No, 63. He's 63. I'm 55. Now, take himself. What he accomplished and what he does right now at 63, the average young person could never keep up with him. I know for a fact. Believe me. And uh, this is proof that there is no excuse for not exercising. There is no excuse for people to say, well, you know, 
I'm a little too old for that. That's for young people. Exercise, especially circular exercise, is the, one of the primary components to a, a real fountain of youth. And uh, you have, with circular training, you have the joint mobility, um, as well as uh, endurance and stamina and, and also uh, muscular strength and an aerobic component. Sure. So there's no excuse. I mean, I've seen photographs of uh, senior citizen bodybuilders that were over 70 years of age and they look phenomenal. I've, uh, you know, and then your, there's your case. Uh, there's uh, the things that Jack Lane did before he died. I'm surprised he... Actually, he had a joke when he was alive. He says, I can't die. It'll ruin my image. Yeah. <laughs> but eventually he did. He died of an infection. I don't know how he got this infection with all the supplements he took, but... Uh, 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 what do you call respiratory infection? But the thing is that... With the right supplementation, taking high amounts, optimal amounts of antioxidants, and doing the right safe exercise, you will have the fountain of youth. Uh, you can check out Paul's videos. He's on the web. Uh, what is the name of your YouTube channel again? It's um, Taras Volkovinsky, but it's Indian clubs and how to use them, basically. I mean, you'll find um, that. Or if you go to my website, which is indianclubs.com.au, you'll find links there to my YouTube channel where all the videos are. Okay, you go there. Um, now, um, after New York City, after you know uh, this uh, day, wonderful day we're spending, you were going to uh, London, England. Yep. For for personal reasons, uh, uh, old school reunion, and then you were going to. Sheffield, England, to meet with the one and only Mike Simpson. Yes. Who also makes clubs and uh, is, is a uh, expert swinger as well. Um, now, his clubs, it seems like everybody who makes clubs that are worth using tends to use local wood. Well, yeah, because, I mean, basically imported woods or, um, how shall we say, exotic woods are very expensive to get rid right. of. And right. I, I've been, um, in my club making, I've been using um, what I'd term as recycled woods because there's a lot of houses in West Australia that are being, say, renovated or pulled down and there are, there are sort of um, four, um, two by four um, sections of wood which can be used as glue-ups to, um, you know, and then you can create sections to make clubs from and turn them on really? the lathe. Is that usually a uh, pine that they use? No, no, it's called it's Jarrah. Our local wood in West Australia is Jarrah, oh. which is a hardwood. Oh, Jarrah is... Um, which is the eucalyptus. That's the eucalyptus marginata. That's yeah. the eucalyptus... Uh, that's correct. Uh, it's, it's probably a, a variety of eucalyptus. Yeah, it's, it's a very special one. It was basically... Um, Jarrah was, um, at the turn of the last um, century, Sort of 18 to 1900s was um, used and shipped off to England, and a lot of it's still lying as sleepers under the um, underground in London because it's so it doesn't rot and it doesn't basically oh, wow. suffer from um, you know basically problems like other woods do. So, is it very sappy? Does it need to be killed? It has killed yeah, and dried. Well, it does need to be killed and dried, but it also has um, sap in the sense it has gum because it's a gum tree, it has gum tree veins running through the wood. Okay, and if you um, and you know, when you sometimes put a piece of wood onto the lathe and start turning it, it'll only become apparent that there's, after you've started turning it, there's a gum line running through it. So you have to stop, basically, scrape all the gum out, fill it with epoxy, and I mix epoxy with um, um, sanding powder from the jarrah to, mm -hmm. to fill it with. And then once that's dry, you can, can continue turning the, turning the clubs. And it just gives you, it gives you a unique feel because, I mean, every club is slightly different from the other. So they oh, yeah. um, so, and I mean, Mike uses beech in England as a, as a wood. I mean, here um, we use maple in the states, which is, seems to be a very popular wood for um, for clubs. Yeah, maple uh, because it's plentiful. Um, um, like people, uh, somebody else I know uh, uses um, because it's inexpensive. Uses alder and poplar. Okay, yes, poplar. Uh, yeah, yeah. My, my friend. Uh, um, um, Christian Dars of RevolutionClubs.net, who made my clubs, uses uh, 
sometimes he uses maple, but most of the time he uses hickory and white oak, okay. yep. which are very hard, dense woods, especially sure. hickory. And uh, with Christian Garce of Revolution Clubs, he originally made wooden swords for uh, medieval sword fighting practices. Sure, sure. And, and I think he makes swords, some kind of ceremonial sword for the for the U.S. Marine Corps. I, I, I'm not sure, but mostly uh, Purple Heart Armory is the company that where he sells wooden swords for these these people that like for, to yeah for contests of sword fighting. Right, yeah, right. right. I, I guess you know place places where they have jousting and things of that nature. Sure. Well, it's like Forteza um, in Chicago. I mean, they do that sort of thing. I mean, they have swords that yeah. are, um, are dummy swords, but basically, I mean, they're used in a real action fights. Like kendo stick type? Well, it's a sort of, yeah, but I mean, it's medieval, um, yeah. you know, Italian med medieval style fighting. Exactly. That, that's what this sport is, medieval fighting, and you, and you practice with simulated wooden uh, weapons. Sure. Uh, then you have the, the uh, martial arts fighting sticks. I think they call them escrima. Escrima, yeah. Yeah. Which is popular amongst certain martial arts. But I want to tell you a little bit of a story now. I am um, for this trip. I just I wanted to bring a pair of clubs with me, and I decided that um, the only way that I was going to get them into my luggage and not weigh too much was to use to make them in pine. Now pines are softwood, and it, it, obviously if you knock the clubs together, it dings really easily. Oh, that's not good. No, no, no. But. But in, in saying that, um, the, um, for instance, if you have a look at the Spalding clubs, for instance, a two-pound club, it will be about 18 inches in length, mm -hmm. and um, it's got so it's, it, it swings a, a fairly small arc as a circle. Now, the ones that I've made are cut-down versions of the Cobbett and Jenkin A club, which was originally designed as a 26-inch, and I made them 24-inch so that it fit into my suitcase. Ah. And they came out at two pounds, basically perfect two pounders each. But they're 24 inches long. Now, the, there's everybody who's seen them so far, because I've, I've had everybody who photographed with these clubs, are which they, I'm gonna, you're going to have to do too. Are these the clubs with the red stripe? Yes, uh, that's stripe the ones. Around? Yeah, that's the ones. We'll call, we'll call them the, uh, the Paul... Traveling Club. Wolkanowski World... World Indian Club World Tour Clubs. We'll call them World Tour Clubs, Clubs. 2013. Well, no, but the interesting thing about it, to finish the story, is that they, they, um, they're they a two-pound club, but they, they're an extended club, if you like. So they're six inches no longer than, say, a Spalding two-pounder that would have been made in maple. So consequently, the swinging property of that club is because the weight's that much further away from your wrist, ah. and it feels like a heavier club. Because of torque. Because of torque, yeah. It, it's it's a very nice club too. Everybody's commented about it, and it suddenly made me realise that, you know, it, the the concept of working out a longer, lighter club as opposed to a, a you know, eighteen inch, twenty inch club. Here's you know, look at a twenty four inch club, but make it light around at about a two pound weight is a very good weight to, for pe most people to swing. I always prefer the the uh, longer club meals than compared to the short, fat, stubby ones. That I, yeah, I, me too, that me I too. call pickle barrel meals. The the ones I have, the eggplant meals made by Revolution Clubs, they are the exact replicas that uh, are owned by uh, Richard Army McGuire, and they are from his are from Iran. These are exact replicas, just like your. You have the replica of Sim D Kiho clubs, replica of the original antique. Sure. Made from Jarrah. Yeah. And actually, I must have, I've got to chip in at this point. I, in, in Hawaii and also in Philadelphia, I had the chance to actually swing 120 year old Kehoe's, which wow. was, I mean, a, it was a true delight to me because it's a, it's a unrepeatable situation. You know, I mean, I don't know when I'm, it's very unlikely that I'll ever own a, a set of those clubs. Those are owned by Izzy Barrett. Uh, right? Izzy and Paul Imada in, in Hawaii. Oh, so okay. I had a, an opportunity to swing in both places, those clubs, and they are very different. I mean, their shape is very bulbous. They're quite fat at the end, eight pounds, eight to ten pounds a piece. But it was a, it was a joy to do. I mean, it was really was, you know, just fantastic to feel an old club in your hands. You know, one of the original ones that, came, you know, was developed for the States, you know, in the 1860s. It's amazing. You swing in history. Yeah, that's it. Who knows how many generations swing, swung, swung those clubs?
Well, that's right. And how many will do it? Because, I mean, the, the clubs are actually slightly lighter than their um, original weights because the wood's dried out, so the, the moisture yeah. content's gone. But, but doesn't, doesn't the weather slightly change the weight of a wooden club? Yes, it does, yeah. And, I mean, the wood... I mean, it, apparently, the, um, from my wood turner in Perth, he said that, um, you know, if, if wood's got about 20% moisture in it, it's, it's, it's good to turn. But, I mean, that moisture is, over a yeah. period of time, going to dry out and it's going to become lighter yeah. because there's a water weight yeah. content there. <laughs> well, 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 Christian told me, uh, Christian Darst told me, pine has to be really kiln dry thoroughly sure. because it's a sappy wood. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if poplar is in the pine family, but, uh, well, these woods are generally picked because of price. They're reasonable. They're, you know, it, but wood is, it's all from nature. As long as you're using real wood, it's all good. The wood is, the wood is what makes it good. Uh, but, um, you know, you just have to make sure it's kiln dry. Now, the first time your wood turner, I, I assume it was your wood turner that made the Simdi Kehoe. When your when your first pair cracked on the lathe, yeah, uh, was that because it was not thoroughly dry? No, no, no. That was that's for another reason. Because Jarrah, because it's such a dense wood, it has um, as a as a as the tree grows and it gets thicker and thicker over the years. Right. Um, it the outside layers pressurize the inner core of the wood. Mm -hmm. And as you turn on a lathe and you remove the inner core to expose, you know, the inside, that the, the release of the pressure actually splits the club open or the wood open. So, for, I mean, from now on, when I go back, um, I'm going to be looking at doing glue ups as opposed to making new clubs out of a solid piece because then I'm going to avoid that problem of the um, because the the wood wood would have rested and not be subject to a splitting anymore because it's not on one whole piece. So, I mean, that's um, unlikely that I'm going to be doing that again. Out of the, you know, so, I mean, maybe I'll make a sort of a, um, a one, two pound, up to about four pound out of single pieces of wood. But after that, they're going to be glue up for heavier stuff. So you, um, well, of course, you would have to use a, a very high quality uh, epoxy. You know, uh, yeah, with, sure, sure. Like yeah. a, in the United States, there's something called Gorilla Glue, which is supposed to Yeah, that's to what I use. Gorilla, yeah, yeah. We've, got, we've got that in Australia. Um, Hard as Nails is another good company. Sure. Um, yeah, so um, this is, uh, aside from the jet lag, this has turned out to be a very uh, interesting uh, trip for you, to say sure. the least. Sure. I'll just talk just briefly about the actual ball on the end of the, cl of the club handle for a yeah. second. one Because I've made some, some quite interesting um, findings on the trip. Um, the, the balls, basically the traditional clubs like the Kehoe's have a ball, literally a circular sphere at the end of the handle. Yeah. And a lot of people have been making like, like them like that. Now Mike Simpson, for example, in England makes a slightly flattened ball. So, I mean, it's not a circular one anymore. It's, it's actually a, a sort of egg shape on its side. So your, your pinky, so the it's end, still, still, it, no, pinky can still sit round it, but it's slightly more egg shaped. So it feels, I mean, you've got to think of the, the club handle as the, the ball, and then your palm as the socket. I mean, it's like a ball and socket type relationship. Okay, and the and the oval egg shape fits fits into into there. Now, but going on from there, um, on in a, in two different places, I've found the um, clubs which have had the egg shape rather than being flattened and mounted on top of the club, it's on its end and mounted. Now that end piece, if it's mounted, the egg shape fits into your palm there really, really well. So consequently, it enables swings of a different nature and okay. hand, different handling of, a, of, of the club. It's more, it's more ergonomic. Uh, very ergonomic and it's something that I'll be experimenting with when I get back to Australia is to, um, to check out the, the, the potential. Never, had, never occurred to me to turn the, the shape on, the, on, on its end so you've got the egg shaped line that way as opposed to that crisscross on your hand that way. And then um, in um, Bowling Green, there was another major discovery is that the, the, um, the ball on the end of the club was um, literally a doorknob size. So consequently, the grip was a claw grip on the end of the club and um, providing a fantastic forearm um, workout. Right, so that club can be like a forearm blaster sort of a sure, club sure. for people that want to emphasize grip strength. Yeah. You know, which is very important in, in life. Uh, uh, 
Now, I have a feeling after your trip to the United Kingdom that you're going to have a, a nice, decent bunch of uh, oh, ideas, information, yeah. sure. ideas to work on. Well, that's the, one of the purposes of the trip was to sort of basically get out there and just meet people and talk to people. Yeah. You know, see people's collections, and I mean, and when I say collection, I mean some people have got fantastic collections. Others have just got literally their personal use clubs that they use, maybe two or three right. sets, and it's all great. I mean, it's it's just great to get around and see people and how they use their right. clubs and what they do with them. Um, that's been the mo a big motivator in this right. uh, journey. Well, with you, you you um, you don't just talk to talk. Of course, you walk to walk. You uh, you use the clubs as well as make them, as well as, in other words, you collect them, but not as so much as other people who just are in it for the collecting. Sure. Like there are people who collect action figures who I know somebody that has a whole entire bedroom loaded with action figure uh, uh, investments, you know, to keep, to keep them in the box and all that <laughs> stuff. But this, this man uses them. He, he gets into the uh, kinesiology of club swinging, uh, you know, in terms of, of the form. Now, uh, um, Mr. Ken Thiessen uh, mentioned to me today about that why if you're doing, let's say, uh, the inside mill with heart shape, that people, some people have a tendency not to bend their elbows when they make that swing. Yeah, no, you have to you have to really bend your elbow in, in inward and outward. You have to really bend your yeah. elbow, and I mean basically with um, the clubs, as in with mace swinging, the, the the arm should come really as deep as possible behind your back, and it shouldn't stop up here. Um, basically, you want to dis disengage the biceps and drop the arm be right yeah. behind your head, so as the arms are coming round, bring them through to the front. Because right. joint yeah. mobility is is one of the primary hallmarks of circular training sure. uh, and joints, all joints should be uh, in synergy. Um, so after after the UK with Mike Simpson, which should be a great experience, um, you go to India. Yes. Now, yeah. are you going to be in the Punjabi area? No, where, I'm not. Okay, I'm not sure that the, the, um, where that is exactly, but I'm certainly going to a place called Varanasi, which is on the Ganges, where... Um, the Gang that's a sort of mystical um, place where I mean they they do a lot of cre cremations on the on the side of the Ganges and then they spread the ashes into the Ganges. In Varanasi also there are uh, lots of akharas um, where um, the the wrestlers train for wrestling, and um, I'm being told that basically a lot of the akharas there still use the mace and the jewelry clubs. Okay, that's um, good. Which is what I want to, what I'm particularly interested in seeing. Uh, I do a lot of mace work myself. Um, that's been a sort of five year journey for me um, with very little sort of um, learning. I had to be find out for myself basically how to do it. And um, I just want to see, you know, more people. I've already met Rick Brown and we shared a few ideas regarding mace swinging. Right. Um, with his, his new loadable uh, mace. With, yes. With the extra large bulbous. Uh, Evil monkey with the with the water water mace. We'll call it the water mace. So you can fill the ball up half with water, and then basically, if the mace is up in front of you, everything shakes because it's the water yeah. sloshing. Well, could you fill it halfway with uh, rum or vodka? Yeah, and probably. Then, yeah, and, and a straw. And <laughs> if you want to do a heavy light system with training, you just drink some of your booze. That's it. it. But now, maybe, who knows, maybe on the trip to India, you might find a nice, beautiful, gaudy pair of uh, Indian jewelries to bring home. Maybe, yeah. I mean, importing wood into Australia is a major problem. So, but I mean, who knows? I mean, if, if you, I can always get customs to clear them and fumigate them in Australia. But um, there again, you know, sometimes photographs might be enough because, I mean, if I can get dimensions and stuff from them, I mean, I've got a lot of information, photographic yeah. information about them. When I was in um, Bowling Green at Roger LaPointe's place, he had a, um, a single um, jewelry club about four foot six inches wide, long rather, um, about 10 pounds. And that was really interesting to swing because you could do a sw single arm swing on that. It was a wooden club turned on, on a lathe. Very, very nice. Um, as a starting weight, I, thought, I would have thought that was ideal. but. The, the, the dynamic between swinging a meal and swinging a jewelry club is, is, is very, very different because the, 
um, because of the length, the, the circle that you scribe with it is much slower and because it's a much bigger circle, okay. basically. Right. So um, it, it takes a lot longer for the club to travel from standing upright in the front, round the back, and come back to the, the front again because it's just physically longer. So you know, the shorter a club, the, sh the smaller the circle, the longer the club, the longer the, the bigger the circle. Okay. So yeah. it takes, you know, you've got to dwell time as you drop it over your shoulder, turn your arm, bring your elbow forward, bring it up on the other side. It just t seems to take forever for the club to come around. Yeah. I find the longer clubs to be much easier on my shoulder joints than the short, stocky ones. Yeah. I mean, because with the, with the heavy, shorter clubs, it tends to whip back too quickly. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I didn't like club bells. I've got to be honest. I don't, I'm not knocking club bells. I'm not knocking it. But I mean, I find that the, the circle that because of the weight, the club bell drops really fast behind you and then back around to the other side, and it doesn't really offer the um, the resistance and the swing that a longer yeah. meal or a jury would offer. Yeah. I, I had a, I had another issue with the club bell. Uh, uh, my hand just kept on sliding. To the end, no matter how hard I, I squeezed the handle, sure. My, I, maybe because of sweat, I got up against steel, it just kept sliding to the end. Whereas with wood, I just naturally have a, a excellent grip on any wood. I have no problems with it. Uh, uh, in India, please don't drink the local water. No, no, I know. I've got some. I've got lots of uh, protection from that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. Uh, I, I got the um, I got the runs once, my first time in another country, and I uh, learned that how not to get it. And sure. uh, I, what I did was I took the uh, very high potency uh, probiotics. I, some people call it yogurt bacteria probiotics, and I also took garlic extract. And uh, because I like to eat authentic local food, sure. I don't like to go to a tourist trap and uh, no. and eat you know, Americanized uh, food. I like to eat what the people eat, but unfortunately, depends where you are. Uh, people, different cultures have different ways. I mean, uh, when I was in uh, Acapulco, Mexico, there was a, a restaurant, outdoor restaurant, and all the locals were allowing the flies to land on their on their food. Yeah. Me, yeah. that's to me, that's absolutely disgusting. I, 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 I couldn't, no, I couldn't be, deal I, with that no, I can't deal with that, but that's just an example. Sure. I mean, we could do, go on, that's another talk show, but, um, so, and after India, you return back to Perth. Yes, yes. Okay. And then basically I'll be digesting all the information that I've picked up um, regarding club design and um, what my thoughts are, and I, I mean, I have swung a lot of clubs now, and I've, basically I've noted down things I've liked and disliked about various clubs. I think one other, one other thing which is quite important and um, my traveling clubs have got on them is um, Kehoe in his early designs um, made a, um, a, a slightly wider grip on the handle so that it sits just in the palm of the ball, you know, the palm of your hand. Right. So as you hold the club with a hammer grip, that, that thickens out just inside the palm here. And I've done that on my traveling clubs, but I've got the spacing, couldn't, it's not quite right. It needs to be just readjusted. So the next pair, because mm -hmm. these are very much a prototype, the next pair I'll make, I'll just tighten that design up a little bit. And I think that that's, um, it's fantastic because with club work, you've got two different things. You've got the open arm circles, for instance, where the arms straighten out completely as they come around and then they bend for a wrist circle at the back of the head. Um, and the, um, but then you've also got um, like a wrist roll circle so that the club is here and then you can roll it forward. And for a wrist circle, you need to, what I call choke the club, so you need to actually shorten it so that the, um, you're holding the handle and you're, basically the, the ball is at the back of your wrist here. The club is rolling sort of from maybe a quarter of the way up the handle as it rolls forward. Okay. So, I mean, you're not doing it with, you can do it right at the end, but sometimes it's quite nice to actually shorten the club and do it a, a quicker circle. Yeah. So you've got to, you know, you can, you can vary the size of the circle and the speed of the circle. And having this sort of, this um, thickening on the club handle actually helps that because you know that you're gripping both the clubs in the same place when you're doing that. So you can move your hands up and down Okay. The, the, the handle of the club. Now the Cindy Kehoe clubs uh, are are they they 
by appearance, they seem like they're mid-heavy, as opposed to the uh, the yes. rolling pin British style, which has the weight more towards the towards end. The end. Yeah. The keyholes are like middle ground, mid-heavy. Mid-heavy, yeah. And I mean, I think the, um, the I, this is purely supposition, but I mean, the keyholes are more shaped to me like a Corella is, which is a sort of in-between of a, um, a long club and a, um, a mace. Um, and basically, it's a, a sort of like, a, it's got a fairly fat body on it, and the weight is not all to the end, like with a mace, right. it's end heavy. Um, a Corella is sort of like, it's more spread out. The keyholes are a bit like a Corella, thinking about it, it's shape-wise. Right, and and of course, the uh, the Somtola is like an Indian barbell. It's, it's like a, a log of wood with handles carved into sure. them. Uh, then there's a, um, there's a large, in heavy Indian jewelry uh, called a, a Mugdal. No, Mugdal, a Mug, from what or I can work out, Mugdal is, um, is a lighter version of a jewelry. It's a shorter club. Yeah. So it's more of a length of a meal, like a, like a short meal length. Okay. And it's used for um, repetitive um, back circles, basically. Well, what, what, there was an, Indi there's an Indian man who has a, a, um, a YouTube video where he's swinging this one very large club with two hands, and it looks like a pepper mill in a restaurant. Sure. And I'm trying to think. It's in, in the end, their look was very interesting. It looked, it's 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 bulbous. It it comes more narrow towards the end. It was kind of bulbous in the middle, and it had a uh, a long enough handle to accommodate two hands. hands. And it was a pep big pepper mill. Actually, me and Ken Thiessen joke around about it that it looks just like a big pepper mill. You know, fancy restaurants have very the yeah, longer yeah, yeah, the yeah. pepper mill, the fancier the restaurant. That's it. That's it. Do you like some fresh ground pepper, and you know the hands all the way up here. Uh, you have the giant pepper mill like that? No, I don't. No, but I mean, I'm thinking, you, you just were talking about that very early photograph that I found on the internet. Is that the one that you're referring to? Mm -hmm. But this was an actual, it's a very poor video. Oh, it's a video, okay. If I find it, I'll send it to you. But sure. It's, it's, it's a very poor, poorly made video. Now, uh, uh, Christian Jolly in the UK is, um, he's, he comes from a family of wrestlers that I'm led to believe. I don't know for sure. But he, um, he's swung some clubs for Mike Simpson. And he does a lift with um, like a 20 kilo club where he, he grabs the, um, the club kind of in that position with his hands upside down and then basically pulls the club onto this side. But it goes around the back of his head okay. and pulls it up. Yeah. Now that's a move um, I've tried to replicate um, with a meal. And uh, I mean, it's only a single handed meal, so I haven't got really the right club to do it with. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure it's a doable um, move. And it, th I think that in that case, the heavier the club, the better. Because it's basically a method of lifting something very heavy up on, uh, by, by, by swinging it. Um, now, they've, just out of in interest here, the, there are some very long joys, as you know. And um, yes, there is. I think that's the technique that Christian would have used here would have been a way of, of actually picking up a jewelry and getting it up onto your shoulder um, with this sort of double lift. Yes, I mean, you literally, the, I forget which way the go, hands go, but one is um, behind the other, the club's on the floor, right. and the club is at an angle on the floor, so it's not self standing, it's already leaning into the lift. Okay. And then you basically swing it up and bring it onto the shoulder. And then you obviously, if you cross your hands the other way, you can do it to the other side. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, um, this old illustration of Indian club swing that I, I have, uh, very old. I think it's early uh, 1900s. Uh, it um, it shows two-handed uh, club exercising with a large club. So you know, it, it, uh, there's just so many. There's different variation. It's not just the pair of bowling pin clubs that is part of Indian clubs. No, I, mean, I, mean, I think it really f falls into sort of three, well, there's three areas really. There's there's light Indian club work, which is fantastic for sort of um, just, um, you know, upper body, um, just getting it going, I mean, yeah. and just moving. Then you can graduate to sort of like clubs which weigh about four to eight pounds to 10 pounds, which you right. can do, um, you, you obviously, the heavier the club, the more limited you are with the sort of the fancier swings you can right. do. Then you go to the meals, um, which are the Persian clubs. Um, the, the, the movement there I'd call a closed arm movement where the arms never really straighten out. 
so they don't go to any open arm movements as with a lighter club. And they keep them on the shoulders. And they keep them on the shoulder or just in or just in front upright without touching the body. Right. Then the Indian version of that is with a jewelry club, which is um, much longer and um, sort of four foot, four and a half foot, um, which they, they then they do rest them on the shoulders. And then at the end of the scale, you've got the mace, which is a two-handed, two-handed or single-handed, depending on the weight of the mace. But I mean, the, the it's the optimum in um, swinging um, something heavy that's very awkward, very um, um, unbalanced. But, it, but in fact, it gives you an all-round um, exercise and right. it's a fantastic body workout. So you would say that the, the mace has the greatest amount of torque out of all of them? I would say so, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, okay. the, the, the heavy clubs have, you know, it, talk in a slightly different way, but I mean, from my, my experiences and, and learning, the um, using meals, for example, is a fantastic way to prepare your arms and shoulders and loosen everything up to work with the mace. Right. Uh, because they are kind of intertwined, the movements are similar. They're not the same, okay. but they're similar. Okay. And um, the um, you know, there's one. This is basic difference is that with um, the, the 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 mace you drive more from the hips, whereas with um, Zurkane star swinging, you're stepping and transferring your body weight from one foot to the other as the swings happen at the back. You know, uh, in Zurkanes there are these people who use these little baby Persian meals to juggle with. They throw it very high up in the air and they, they do like uh, acrobatics sure. on the floor and catch them as they're f after they're flipping. And it's some amazing juggling work. I don't know if, you, if you've seen I've this. seen a few videos with it, yes. I um, mean, they're little, they're little, they're, they're attractive. They're decorated, they're painted, whatever. You um, know, I mean, the Indian ones can be very ostentatious and gaudy looking, but they're you know, uh, they're, they're little juggling clubs. It's just interesting. And they have little kids doing it too. They're training them uh, from a very young age. Um, the, uh, the the most common design you see on these clubs is the Paisley. Now, uh, Zirkane Australia, an uh, uh, Iranian gentleman, said the Paisley represents humility. It's actually a leaf on a tree. And as a tree, you know, has is full, the branches lower themselves because of weight, and that's where they uh, got the symbol from. It's an actual leaf. Okay. For those that are wondering where, where Paisley came from, you know, no, it is not uh, a spermatozoa or paramecium or anything like that. Okay. It's, it's supposed to be a leaf. I thought it looked like yeah. it was. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so that's basically it. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you very Paul Wolkowinski. Volkovinsky. Volkovinsky? That's it. That's what it. about that, that famous uh, Russian uh, kettlebell uh, master? Uh, his name is uh, Ivan Jakanov. Right, okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, w I was told by, by a gentleman in, in, in Southern California about that. Okay. Yeah, he's, oh, before I say goodbye, the undisputed king of clubs, <laughs> Paul Taras Volkovinsky. Thank you, James. The king. Nice to meet you again. <laughs> All right.